These interviews in no way reflect the views of Arrayus Productions. This project is in no way endorsed by Arrayus Productions. As students in a continuous state of learning and frequency accretion, we each hold our own unique perspective of the teachings and how they relate to our individual experiences. It is important for viewers to remember that we are in fact self-sovereign beings with free will expression and we each carry our own perceptual filters with potential for distortion. These interviews are intended to inspire and in no way should reflect upon Iesha, Arrayus Productions, or any of her work as there is no affiliation. More information on the Alhumbra Magistracy Council of Cosmenius, the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, Tantriora, Tantriasia, and the Kelantic Science can be found in the provided links below. Feeling the frequency there, man. It's like a lot. You feeling? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I've been, been feeling it building myself for the last few hours, and yeah, it's, it's good, man. It's been, I've been building up to being able to, um, I guess, gather the strength and clarity to to really go in there with you and. Um, Sure. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, you got some good sun there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Got my selenite sticks here. Oh, cool. Oh. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. I've got like. Oh, yeah, I put that out there. Yeah. It's out there with the kids. I've got like a big selenite log. I got it's like huge. It's like not like this thick and that long. It's a big generator. <laughs> I think I think you just summed up the exact size of the one I have as well. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got one. On yeah, like... yeah. It's it's kind of stumpy. It's like yeah, it's probably about that wide by by about that. Yeah. yeah. You talk about silicon trees, huh? Those things are very much like that. Yeah, have you seen that the no forest thing? No, no, I haven't. It's the it's, you have you heard of the flat earth thing? Yeah, the flat yeah, earth yeah. movement. It's tied into that where they're trying to. I don't know quite how it's tied into it, but they're trying to make a link to it. When it first came out, it was a Russian physicist, I think, that put it out, and then they did like an English dub over it to make it more clear. And mm -hmm. he's basically teaching that like all the canyons and deserts are artificial, and they're like. Uh, they were dug out and they're like quarries mm -hmm. like for earth's natural resources and all these big like i don't know if you've seen the basins in golden where they kind of look like i mean it does look they do kind of look like tree stumps but he's teaching that these are basically they used to be like silicon trees and they were chopped down and that they used to be that big and i'll have wow. to send you pictures to explain it but you have to see the video but like some rock formations or like tree stumps, basically, is what he's saying. Mm. And so like all these places, like there's one in Africa that has like the hexagon shapes of these like cylinders that come up. But it, it's the ones that they say were from volcanoes mm -hmm. that make these type of formations. And he's saying that they're actually trees and there's like a whole root system and that's like the bark and everything. Mm. It's interesting. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And like the petrified forest and... Everything. Mm. I'm kind of looking at well, selenite like that too. Like it feels, I mean, it's like it, it feels alive, but it's like it has like fibers in it, you know. I don't like that. Uh, well, apparently, it's, I've, I'm told that selenite is the most common crystal on the planet. No. Um, no or the most prevalent. Um, but uh, on, on that note, I'm also told that um, apparently insects make up one third of the Earth's mass, which is fascinating. But uh, <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Saying? But where where are you seeing this from? The same source? Um, no, no, just just stuff that I've heard. That That's um, true. yeah, it was quite interesting, but I uh, almost hard to believe in a way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You have to really so, do these days. You hear a lot of stuff, and then you gotta dig another layer and find something else out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah.
cool. Did you see this aquifer that I found out here in Colorado? This 30,000. Oh, yeah, aquifer? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. Amazing. Yeah. I've been diluting the water. I'm trying, I'm making a week long testimony of it, of my experience with it. It's kind of, I feel like my body's kind of adapted to it at this point. It's been since Friday and I'm kind of on an even level. But when I first took it, it was like a supercharged thing, you know, just like zapped my body and there was a definite reaction that happened. And I was drinking it straight. I don't drink it straight now. I've been blending it with distilled because it doesn't feel like, it feels almost like it's abusing it or something. It's almost like an alcohol drink. <laughs> like you just mix a little bit with something else, you know, like hard liquor. Mm. And he actually made moonshine. He comes from a family that makes moonshine, so he knows his water, you know. Always looking for good mm -hmm. water. I think that's probably how he found it and stumbled across it. Did you see the video and everything? If no, I'm I didn't talking see the video. About it? Yeah. No, I made a video with the, the kids. Pictures. He let me interview him a little bit, but he kind of halted on some questions, like with the Indians and with the history of it. He didn't want to go too far into it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's fascinating. Cool. And it's, somebody just told me it's right on Elon 7, like where they used to do the grid work out here, and one of the gates was. Yeah. Makes sense. Amazing. Yeah. I love the background. It's really nice. This is your backyard? Yeah, right now it is where I'm staying at the moment. Um, been on holidays and uh, just very close near the most easterly point of Australia. Yeah, you're saying you go back and forth to uh, not B Bali also, but like what's the other place that's closer? What's that? Uh, where I am now is Byron Bay. Oh, you're at Byron Bay now. Okay. Yeah, and but you very must go close more in Byron. inland. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and also towards Melbourne, where I was born. Melbourne. I know some KSers from Melbourne. Have you met mm -hmm. any KSers there in Melbourne? Uh, I have actually met a few. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was a group um, running in Melbourne for a little while. And um, oh. was there a Cathar not... team out there in Melbourne? That was Sydney. Uh, I, think. I think it was Sydney. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the other thing too is if it does cut out, um, I'm just going to have to re-load um, the um, SIM card for my um, internet because oh, we right. have very limited. Um, we pay like ten bucks per gig here. And um, so it's it's not like in America where apparently it's you get unlimited. So oh, yeah, geez. that's crazy. I yeah. didn't know they did that there. Yeah, it's nuts, yeah. man. It's yeah, totally. Okay, cool, man. So let's let's start. Let's do it. Man. We're back on KS Reality Talks, and we are here with Adam, and he hails from Australia. He has a story to share about the shield split and how it led him to KS, and he's just going to share some of his experience with that on his end and how it was for him. So go right ahead, Adam. Uh, thanks for having me, Chris. I was involved in a spiritual community in 2002 in my quest for what was going on on our planet, and got involved with a group on the east coast of Australia and moved up to be a part of that more deeply. And Do you mind saying the name, like what group it was? Or it... The Academy of Energy, Science and Consciousness, Byron Bay. Byron Bay, okay. What was the dynamics of what they were doing? Like, Were they using um, 
Kabbalah or what kind of meditations were they doing? What was it based off of? This was the core group of Ascension in Australia, mainly developed by one particular woman who had been trained over many years by the Enlightened Masters, a woman that had no real interest in any of that and was opened up during a university lecture and had all this liquid light visions and disappeared for a few years while they trained her. Sounds and, and Sounds kind yeah. of like what she was saying. She was on a base in Hawaii or something, trained by the Iani. It's like there was a few years that she was just gone or maybe just visitations at night or something, I don't know. The main thing that the group actually offered was mystery schools, releasing karma and healing the ancestral line and repatterning the energy body through these different techniques. And a lot of meditations, really well done. And what felt heart opening and forgiveness work, a lot of law of reflection work and after years of being involved, had an opportunity to take the reins with the temple space while the key teacher was promoting her book over in America. And so we took on the challenge with the intention of opening up the space to the broader community. Otherwise, it would have to be closed down. So a group of us invited the community in, in Byron Bay. We had a really amazing time. Two big industrial warehouses with white carpet and lots of areas. And there was one room upstairs. And it actually had over $100,000 worth of crystals up there. It was a powerful spot. I went from being not really that clairsentient with the crystals. And then after two, three months, I was in there meditating every day, six to 10 hours a day, effortlessly. And it was incredible. I reached some of the, the highest heights as well as some of the lowest lows. It became clear to the new group that we were in some ways drifting away from the spiritual authority of the previous structure that was in play before we took the space on. And that really became apparent when the teacher returned. I challenged the teacher to acknowledge the other ascension lines of information on the planet. The emails went back and forth for a couple of weeks. A big drama erupted. And a lot of the story was revolving around this particular mantra called the God Presence Mantra and played in that room where all the crystals were from the CD player. Apparently she was told by St. Germain that the mantra had to be playing to those crystals every day. 24 hours a day. We weren't really feeling the living consciousness in that. We were in there every day singing to the crystals with a lot more direct daily interaction with them. She came back with a channeled note from the Council of Twelve. Clearly done through automatic writing and all due respect she probably believed that this was the highest level of reality supposedly coming from these higher dimensional councils of light but to our group on the ground something didn't feel right about it can you sum it up like what it was what was she saying it felt quite manipulative and in some ways was an ultimatum it needs to be this way because we say so Authority. and that it's yeah, yeah. It wasn't a real human level of feeling behind it, like an artificial program. Communicated in that way was just really impersonal. Either we were to do it her way or we'd be cast out of the group heart and never be involved in the divine university. That's kind of familiar too. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah, and this was a group that was generally run mostly by women. So as a result, the core masculine integrity was missing from the process at that moment. To me, that is reversed masculine energy. And within that week, she came in and gutted the place. She took everything out of there. She even ripped up the white carpet that was in there and just kind of sabotaged all the goodness that was happening. And that put us behind financially. And, and some of that kept was like volunteer work that people had contributed themselves, I'm sure, right? That it helped and yeah. to me. It was kind of a sense that a lot of the, the local community felt that it was finally sort of building something good. And then she in and realized that she wasn't able to be the spiritual authority of the place. Then the shit hit the fans. We did keep the place going for um, a period of time. It was probably about six months after that. And um, a lot of the, the stuff that we were doing wasn't financially based agenda. So um, it kept its purity that way and we weren't able to sustain it financially. So of course it fell apart and we lost that place. We gained a lot of knowledge through that and after that is when I got heavily into KS. Because I was drawn to figure out the reasons behind those distortions and had to find something to explain why it all fell apart. And the most interesting part about it is that after the Lotus Temple fell apart and we had pulled everything out, it was the very same time that the shield split happened with the KS crew. And wow. um, 
Yeah. Yeah, How it was, was the exact same time. Around 2012, then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. We were together on some level through the All Oneness, on the same mission. Was there other, and honestly, any other speakers in the group or people that had worked their way up to her line or anything like that? Taking yeah, yeah, line? well, there were other teachers, some of the most beautiful people that I'd ever had in my life. Really strong Lyran connections, really strong Syrian connection. It still remained to, the ultimate control was, was always in her hands. And um, no matter how high anyone was, was ever going to get, it was it was always going to be that way. So, how, how close was this to the Cathar grid and like the eternal flows and all the teachings of KS stuff? Was it pretty close to that? Did you see anything similar? There wasn't really any awareness of the core teachings of KS within our group. We hadn't any knowledge of the living tree of life um, at that time. In 2012, I started to see other elements to this universal structure that was actually directly related to all of the problems we were facing. So it put a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together for me. And mainly it was the, the Maharic shield and the flame body meditations the flame body meditation to me is a, is a unisai type of practice. And, and to me, that's at the core of every spiritual practice on the highest level to me is about bringing the union into the, into the cells. Shield mechanics and stuff. Is it, that's what we had a, a recent KS or I don't know if you were friends with him, Bill Walker. Uh, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. He recently passed on and he was teaching me that, like I had no idea that there was like ancient, ancient like religions and practices that knew about like shield mechanics and stuff and they used that the terms of the shields and the protections and different things i don't know to what extent i haven't researched it but it's kind of like been around for a while i guess these different mm. forms of protection similar to chaos mm. to mm. some of chaos so there was people like doing the maharic shield that were in this group also or doing the frequency stuff no, no, not that I'm no. aware of. It was really something that I just sort of found personally and had to really get deep into to find out as much as I could about it in the shortest possible time. So I was experiencing plasma body activation before I discovered KS, a result of relating directly with the halls of Amenti through the crystals that I was working with at the time. And it was quite confronting. I didn't really know what the purpose of these frequencies was. I just knew what I was feeling. That was probably in about 2010 that I started to experience um, plasma frequencies. And what was the difference? What was the main difference with plasma versus like Maharik, Maharata, 12D stuff? When I experience plasma frequencies, it's a very tangible physical experience. And I sense that people experience it differently. But when I was doing the, the Maharik frequencies, it was a really healing time for me. And it really connected me into Michael Dean's voice through his sound waves. After the shit split happened, it, it became more challenging to work with that. So after that, like, you you haven't been in resonance like with the like the KS plasmas teachings since after that. You were more in resonance before. Definitely in in resonance with the teachings. It's what I sense with the group shield with KS is that up until the point Ashiana was able to spill the beans, it could have been done in a different way. And what it did for me personally was that it created a lack of trust in that leadership. None of it was the same from that point on. So you honestly feel like there wasn't as many people compromised as what was kind of made out to be, like with the Cathar team, ordinations having to stop, the fatality thing. Like you didn't really feel resonance of that. Like it was still good. Ah, uh, definitely. It really is the group itself that actually creates um, the potency of, of a group consciousness field. Um, and, and when that group is, is split like that, it's, it's kind of like it's no longer in the unicide. It's no longer in, in a healed wholeness in, in, to me. And it's so, so I think that there's a self-prophesied outcome type things. Yeah, well, when the duality is brought into so strongly based on that trauma, it can evoke a pretty core battle of the sexes type environment. And this is something that can be easily activated and triggered within our collective psyche on the planet at the moment. So this was more like an imbalance of the feminine masculine thing, like where the feminine went out of balance. Is that what you're saying? Definitely. It's easy for anyone who's processing emotional trauma to make irrational decisions that don't serve the higher interests of the group. In many ways, it highlights the humanness. I've perceived that many of the human level perspectives 
offered by Ashiana Dean are, in my opinion, incomplete and in some ways quite unclear. And we each have our blind spots. Um, I see many blind spots on a human emotional level there. And this has been reflected in my experience with much of the group that I have perceived also carries particular distortions as well, especially in relation to the emotional flows on a human level. Study the KDDL dynamics of what she's explained is taking place right now, like with the direct interface from the black hole system. I haven't actually been into the KDDLs yet. A lot happening with water right now. It's like uh, activations happening in the Earth's aquifers is what the Truro stuff is about. <clears throat> and that's kind of like the, you know, it's a classic KS counter strategy stuff with the Guardians and with how far they took it, then there's got to be this counter thing. And that's failsafe was like the biggest. But it's, to me, the, the initial thing, we were talking earlier about the frequency fence to get into the new work and the KDDLs because I, I really did feel that kind of a um, repulsion zone or something that I had to work my way through because a lot of people, for a lot of people that did leave, the mantra is that it's just rehash. You know, this is basically external, internal stuff. It's the same dynamics and everything's being taught, but now it's a whole new paradigm. And you just, just accept that it's inner domain and we're not working external stuff now, which is digestible you know you can definitely see it as that and basically even go back to voyagers and look at terra and just swap the names around and say median earth and bridge zone projects and stuff because it's it's very similar to to what's happening right now so mm -hmm. that's the thing that that was kind of my hump to get through but it's like like you were saying about uh, the plasmas that you were working with before like how you could feel it it's more like body stuff that's kind of how it is for me and that's the clincher for me like when you're seeing when you're not only feeling it like physically in your body while you're raising the frequency but then you're seeing that same energy at work in your 3d life you know and there's almost like a bridge to what you're feeling to what your uh, what your 3d role is and how you're interacting with your hologram and with karma and different issues and stuff that's that's where you know that's where it kind of seals the deal that you know that there's something that's at work in your life here you know some mm -hmm. kind of spirit energy that's that's kind of gotten stronger amplified mm -hmm. but, yeah there's i mean there's a lot of dynamics that's happening that she's explained like basically the darkest of the dark is on right now and then the lightest of the light like the good and bad stuff confrontation energy and all the interfaces mm. are like wide open to the systems and she was explaining the Mayans that how they were working what the the story of the dark rift I don't know if you studied that that much but she went into detail with that and how there was like openings directly to these systems the fatality systems to the black hole in the middle of the galaxy and now all of that is just like on through the Norway spiral that that just opened up a direct physical interface to earth so everything's on but then there's we're receiving like the rainbow rounds and these rainbow frequencies that are kind of countering it and like healing the grids and healing all the dark dark gardens over in germany and where uh, a lot of these places were were seeded in our recent history and kind of amplified during the war and stuff so there's a lot of detail to it to go into that she's explained and it all kind of makes sense, you know, because you look at the dynamics of the world right now and you're really living it and you're seeing it just how far humanity's going with things too and just how bright, brighter things are getting but how darker things are getting, you know. Mm. Kind of really seeing mm. that. When it comes to the reality of challenging times, a lot of it is about emotion and mastering the emotional flows, not just personally but on a group level as well. The group in Australia was quite developed in that area of dealing with heavy energies through singing light language and toning to pull people out of heavy, deep emotional traumas and to repair the group shield that way, which in our group, we called it the group heart. You've mentioned before in conversations that we've had that you stand with Michael Dean and this other side of the split. Maybe you could elaborate on that. Michael Dean to me is the co-facilitator and co-creator of a body of work that's brought so much to so many people and certainly deserves the full respect and honour based on that. 
regardless of anything that may have gone on in the group in the past, realizing that this situation is offering a reflection to the group. Yes, we have our flaws and yes, we make mistakes. That doesn't define the totality of a being. So that's all a part of an unresolved body of energy that only can be dealt with through love and forgiveness. And that is a group intention. That is a group mission to do that. And to leave the energy unresolved is one of the worst things that could have happened. In the spirit right now, I'm just thinking maybe it could be a two-part question. Like, If you're comfortable with elaborating more, what your experiences with Michael Dean before and how personable you got with his energy or part of his aspect of the teachings. Yeah, I certainly felt his heart through the meditations that I did with him um, and also the true and pure intentions that he put into uh, the work. And Did you ever reach out to him personally, contact him after the split or before? I have been chatting to Michael. Had some really good resonance with his energy as well. I think I'll go ahead and share too that I've been in correspondence with Michael Dean as well and back and forth with the forming of the newcomers group on Facebook here. I did reach out to him and ask for contribution of what he felt comfortable sharing for the newcomers coming into the group that I'm in contact with. And, you know, he's been more than sincere and kind to me in conversation and frequency wise, I feel, I feel a humble spirit and, you know, very open to sharing his side of the story with me and, you know, very good trust that's been established there. That's taking a leap <laughs> and put myself out there. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing the Asian's new, newest work and I'm talking to her ex too. Wow. Talk about a bridge. Man. <laughs> I haven't really, I've yeah, only told well, like a few people that the people that were part of the newcomers group, but to make it public could be something different. Oh, it's really healthy to transcend the duality of the drama. One's past actions does not define who they are as a being, and one's dimensional alliances does not necessarily reflect the totality of who they are. And I feel that that's what's taken place in this instance, and I feel that that's really inaccurate to label someone based on that unresolved energy. On a group level, that could be called scapegoating. I feel that it's the true heart of a being that actually reflects who they really are. And to me, that's what's important. And who is anyone to judge that without first having a deep and personal connection to all beings involved and to the situation itself? I think that we each have aspects of consciousness that are possibly quite unresolved and quite wounded. And I feel that many of us are doing the best that we can with the tools that we have to process within our bioregenesis and to not define any being by aspects of consciousness that may be wounded or may be experiencing black hole fall or returning to stardust that may simply be just an aspect of who they are and we are so vast and it definitely goes back to what you shared before about the group that you were in and some of the members possibly dealing with hardships as far as you know, even like having a possible fall into a black hole system and the group stood for, stood up for them instead of, you know, dismissing them or saying, well, they're space dusting or this part of their shield is gone and there's nothing we can do. <clears throat> I think that's a huge missing element that's, that's just kind of like the elephant in the living room thing that is not being addressed with this recent shield split in this group. It's just kind of everybody reaffirming their stand of, you know, allowing that, that space does fall and this. Just... Well, it's pretty easy to cast someone out. The, the cold, harsh reality is everyone needs a scapegoat. To deal with that, it's a really confronting thing. To actually be able to accept what has happened and, and to be able to forgive. And it was always about the, the group forgiveness. It was always about bringing resolution as the highest priority is the highest goal to actually face the reality of our humanness and deal with it on the ground on a human level fully there may have already been a resolution that wouldn't have had to hit the online world as it did yeah i do have to agree that there's like a, a huge blatantly obvious missing element that was in that workshop and the whole speaker's denouncement thing mm -hmm. there wasn't like a round table it was very rigid and nobody 
was able to speak their piece and there's just a ton of energy that's just left hanging for at least for me you know i know for a lot of others they kind of bailed out and then the other side the ones that kept going kind of got more and more um just rigid in it in in the divide you know and just kind of wanting to stay separate and just feeding that division just like well we can't we can't associate with this person anymore and this and that. And like I've said in other interviews, I grew up with that, you know, as a child growing up, seeing a church that split like that and seeing families shun each other and just knowing that, you know, in my my personal human psyche growing up, that that's not, that's not how humans interact. That's not normal to me, my core, you know, and that you don't just like, you don't just like in any court of law, just like let one person talk and then you know it just be this one one spotlight of things that was just very off balance but mm. yeah in my perspective the group shield was being hosted by the union of the co-creators of KS so the moment that that split was made public everything got shut down everything that had been formed up to that point like everything was just kind of dismissed and no ordinations, no cathartic team, all the work that had been, that had led up to that point of the failsafe, just a reset. Really highlights the importance of a structure that includes a council of elders to be able to deal with these types of things. Without that structure in place, we might see a disintegration of much of what the group has worked towards. I think it's also really interesting too, the lead up to KS that you had coming from a split and standing up against the, the former leader of this other group who dismissed members of her own group and people that had contributed and, you know, given a lot of their spiritual life towards this group that she had, she had formed. And I've kind of noticed that, like, with some of the newcomers that are coming in right now, it just feels like there's a whole nother, there, there's a lot of blank spaces that have happened from the split that these newcomers are kind of filling in and just realizing that, there were some things that are off. There's a lot of discernment to be used, but yet there's some tangibility still with the ongoing work that's being presented. But there's still a lot of healing that needs to take place. And these are people that are not emotionally vested on either side. So that gives a, a beautiful perspective like for somebody to, to look at and more of an authenticity of, of what is what is there. You know, old work, new work stuff, the plasmas and freedom teachings. I think that's uh, humanity kind of finds a way in that sense in these different settings where there's like a balance that's reached. People kind of migrate towards where that's needed. I'm, I've been witnessing that. But it's good to have like a, a voice, you know, from somebody who's uh, that's like really up close and personal, like coming right from this split into chaos, like and us having our split and just like having that awareness and that perspective of seeing this, like I've already you've already been through this, you've already seen this and seen the dynamics and now it's kind of been playing itself out in this group. So You keep bringing up the, the female and male energy thing, which is interesting. I keep hearing Bill's voice echo in that, that he kind of left me with to look at in chaos, just how there was an imbalance of not enough masculine energy and that that was kind of missing and always trying to find its place but been, being kind of shooed off or something, you know, and just not able to settle into the balance of this, of even just the simple group dynamics, let alone the, the techniques and everything that we're doing here as a group and frequency and stuff. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. He's always kind of left that in my mind to look at, that it is kind of centered around that. I do feel that. Well, this is to me, one of the key elements of ascension is um, balancing the polarities and bringing the union through finding the awareness to see through each other's eyes for men to find the capacity to see through women's eyes and vice versa. And this helps to illuminate the blue flame distortions and to bring clarity. Reverse blue flame distortions or reverse masculine is probably one of the major ways that, that humanity has been manipulated into dark corners throughout the ages. And this is no exception. Recognize that a male form being has access to certain electrical currents that generally female being on this planet will have blind spots in those areas. So as we see through each other's eyes, we can actually then put 
all the pieces together fully and bring the goodness into the human experience again. At the same time, there's this other complication, um, and it was the same thing that brought our group in Byron undone, and the same thing has brought so many groups undone, and that's the impersonal level of communications through emails and through texts and through the phone. It lacks the depth of human connection and human wisdom. The higher intelligence of human level of connection. The Kilontic Dictionary speaks about the primal purpose of the human is ascension, and ascension is directly related to the primal purpose, instinct, higher senses and instinct are deeply related and deeply connected. To eat, to dance, to sing, to love are all part of that, all related to sexuality, the union within one's own body. Definitely. And you have a method that you wanted to share with us on, with music and balancing the energy using music. Could you share that with us? In my process, I've been accessing different experiments around using music, using sound to harmonize and clear energy fields. Had quite a few experiences with holding group sound healings and similar to the work that what a DJ would do holding a space um, that space and that intention can be used for healing purposes. So to harmonize and balance and like hold a neutral space. You have hold to a standing to wave. You like attune to it and then you blend your own frequency with it? Is it that type of thing? You use it as a barometer until you feel clear of it and you're done with it. Oh, it's I like, see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a strong reaction like to a, a particular... Um, frequency of of music which is accessing the whole brain so i think that's why music works so well is because you can go in and completely journey right through that song line and right through that frequency spectrum until you don't feel any connection to it anymore you can use it as a clearing tool that's an interesting technique so like whatever darkness you're about to go through you take it a deeper shade of darkness beforehand so you can walk through that darkness a little easier type thing is that explaining it well yeah well that's that's a pretty good summary if you feel disempowered and you don't have access to that realm then you go in there to actually find the information of how to relate to that on on that human level and any being that's opening their heart to sing a song no matter if it's death metal no matter if it's the most beautiful classical music Hate lyrics, rap, yeah, yeah, it's like women. Absolutely, so. yeah. All part of, of the all oneness, of the living beings that are sharing their story, sharing their message, well, sharing gotta, their pain. i got to interject right there. That's kind of where it, chaos has taken a different turn right now it's in the teaching, the current teachings, is that everybody, and I see this in the group too, and I think that's why everybody's kind of been comfortable being divided, is because that's actually what's being taught, is that there is going to be separation points of these things and levels of resonance where you're just not going to resonate with that anymore. And that's been coming up more for me too, like in the thread and because there's a huge push for world war three right now. It just feels like we're right back in the eighties cold war vibe or something with Russia and all of a sudden, you know, nukes and all this. And it's just, it's already been replayed, but getting back to the point, it's like, that's, that's kind of the direction that the new stuff is going in is that there really will be, break off points and there won't be any amount of resonance left to associate with some of these things i mean do you feel anything with that like in the future or anything happening with that that's really accurate and definitely on the right track being able to relate on an inner being level rather than necessarily on an outer being level so that you can actually see clearly at least feel and see the message of what is occurring fully. Um, but not being aligned to it, like witnessing it, seeing it, but not being in alignment with it, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's, it's, just ignore it and just pretend it away stuff, yeah. Go into La La well, Land. That, that was so much the, the basis of the Metatronic program that I was a part of. These crew that I was involved with didn't even acknowledge the reality of the fallen angels at all. Yeah, It was all just completely oblivious and and it was wishful thinking and it was a sense yeah. of um of that it's all part of the divine reflection and that everything that happens you've attracted it and you need to go in and clear it with the enlightened masters and that, that's that's right. the end of it right. but Love at the same 
yeah, denial program yeah. that. Um, yeah, so much unremembering now, like the connection that, that we made on the Skype. We were up for like all night. It was like eight hours or something, the, the Skype call that we had. And I'm just, I'm going back to that because it really harkens this mantra that was given to me that's really, really dark, but yet I still hang on to it. It's sitting right in front of me, actually. And I, I'm always contemplating what the understanding of this because it's a, it's a Tibetan mantra and it's the teachings of evil spirits and the purpose of this and what the balance and everything but yet not i don't want to go as far as say well maybe maybe i could say like even a respect for it and then because if you understand it you understand the dark there is kind of a respect for that you know and you know its place and you see it and you're able to stand it you don't have to be in alignment with it but there's an understanding of it and an acknowledgement of it and if you're not acknowledging these things it's just kind of it, it's still there you know we still share the same error here it's just well, th there's a lot like there's a very similar um, way of of thinking that I can relate to with that with this mantra I used it during some of the most incredible times of my life like the experience that I had with the future self thing I was very active with this also so I know that there's a huge part of of that understanding that's relevant you know that's still relevant in my life to see it but then there's like the balance with it too uh, real big nutshell here is like that the planet carries the failsafe codes which is gonna the solar system's not going with it the galaxy's not going with it parts of um, uh, what is it I'm trying to remember uh, if it's Orion or another system that's close around that is like there's these little hub points here and there that carry the same codes that are kind of going too but basically the majority of our environment is not ascending so even that alone, that mentality of thinking that way, the, and also the planet itself is, is sifting off the things that are not in resonance with, with itself. So that would kind of lead up to an expectation of seeing, seeing these break-off points of civilizations and people and almost like an expectancy of, you know, of course, the 900 years thing of how this is going to play out, but still, it's still there. That's what's being taught, and that's the dynamics. I mean, do you feel resonance with that, or do you feel like we're all going in the whole solar system, the galaxy? Or how do you feel? I think there's two ways of of ascension, and one is um, one is probably more of a conscious group effort type physical experience, which is like a committed group that's living together long term to actually prepare and then to make it happen through releasing everything. And when a group of people are together physically and have access to all the 12 tribes DNA codes through everyone's different genetics, it's generally not the path of what we've chosen to do. And otherwise, we'd be all living together doing that by now. So you think that that is happening like for the whole, that there really will be like break-off points for everybody? Or is there, there's different types of ascension, I guess, is what you're saying. And what route do you feel like you're taking? Are you doing like the the whole world going in your outlook or do you feel like that there will be you're, you're going to like ascend with the chaos group I mean is it just the chaos group or people in resonance with the plasmas that might not even know about the dynamics or anything they're just going to find themselves ascending and all these other groups going into their fatality systems and I mean how far does that go for you personally no I think only time will tell you think that there's like different probabilities that are already, I mean, I, I kind of think that the Mandela effect is like the, it's kind of like a sign that we're seeing some of the break off points of what people remember. And I don't know if you saw the latest one I posted, the lion and the lamb. Now it's a wolf and the lamb. I mean, do you remember Amazing. that? <laughs> that's Amazing. That's like right yeah. in the face, you know, that's like, come on, he's, there's something going on with this. Is that a probability break off point or we're... I mean, obviously, there's a portion of quantum that's gone now in, the, in just that implication that there's no lion and lamb in our recorded history. And these are 100-year-old Bibles that people are digging up and seeing it. So that's a big chunk that just broke off. And for what reason? Like, why? Is it random? That doesn't make any sense. How would that sway the, the human psyche that much? There's no wolves over there in the, when the Bible was written <laughs> around, around that time. There's no symbology of that. It's more like native symbolic American stuff, you know with our indians but mm. you don't really hear it as much over there and like in the bible <clears throat> so and there's a lot of them there's tons of these mandela things that are popping up 
lot of people yeah. are so sure about it that just know that we're being tampered with and this is like AI technology, this and that. But for me personally, it's like I, I haven't seen it. You know, I haven't seen it put to use. And I, and maybe some people that work with quantum computers know the extent of how far they can go if they're changing the immediate vi environments with these things or what. I I just haven't witnessed it myself, so I don't know. I mean, for all I know, it could just be a simple side effect of, you know, the end of the, the stellar activation cycle or something that we're just seeing these little splits here and there, things just kind of fine-tuning. Do you, do, do you go through a process of, like, doing a whole bunch of techniques or raising frequency and then you see it out picture in your life? Or how, do, how does that work for you? And how do you find the balance, like, with, the, with working with these new frequencies in 3D life? Well, it feels like there's a continual purification that's happening every single moment, um, and it seems to be relating to the to the DNA bonding of an anchoring the higher level of identity into the human experience and um, physical purity and energetic and spiritual purity are, are, are completely connected, um, and at the same time, the physical cleansing is potentially one of the most challenging parts of the story and also maintaining the lifestyle of the purity is also one of the most challenging elements of the earthly process so that is where i'm at right now is um, the physical cleansing doing the arise and shine cleanse is a process for me right now and clearing the inner being of on the physical yeah for me it's been like i mean you bring in this new element of energy or plasma, whatever you want to call it. I'm talking with you, I'm kind of, there's a blending that's happening in my terminology and the words I'm using. I'm looking at the questions and I'm wanting to change some of the, like chaos, this and that and plasma. <laughs> and just because I'm feeling it. And, you know, we need to really start doing that at some point. That's been, it feels like my personal mission and all this is just to really, because if it's real, you kind of have to talk in layman's terms for people to, to grasp it you know the realness of it you can't just like spew out all these technical terms for people to really to understand it you know and if it's something that you believe in it's real you do want to share it you want people to experience that too so I, for me it's been like whenever i do the energy work and introduce this new energy in my life and kind of prepare for the cleansing that's about to take place it's there's a technique above the techniques that the spirit kind of teaches you of finding that balance and it becomes an art there really is like a skill to it to balance it because i've i've caught myself like bringing in too much at once or you know not enough and it fades out and it's gone and then i'm stuck in loops or this and that and i feel like you know recently the the latest stuff has been my testimony is that it feels like it's really it's been the most balanced energy to where it's it's more tangible to where it's really talking to me where it kind of comes to me, the the energy of it comes to me again and kind of gently nudges and reminds me, like in my physical body. And then I just automatically start doing the breathing and just kind of remember, you know, what that was and then go back into it gently. It's been, that's been the experience of it. But I see other people mm -hmm. do the same thing that I've done, like with all this in the past. And I probably will again, just where it, it fades out and you just put it down and there's nothing and you just go out and, and just kind of live it and see what it's really done and then if it brings it back to you then it's back uh, have you ever gone like great lengths of just not doing anything or how does that how's that been is it like a ritual yeah. like we've been consistent yeah definitely different phases and i think a lot of the phases have related to the environment that i've been in at the time and but the how the consciousness was sometimes that's that's inner inner uh interrelated to where the frequencies can change the environment <laughs> you know yeah you definitely. Work with something that you find yourself shifting to a whole another island somewhere and then you know vice versa too i guess like you find yourself you discover the new energy somewhere else yeah well a lot of it i think is related to um being around activated spiritual beings who have done inner work as opposed to more mainstream types of people and i think that um that's really a key element for me and what i see is the the level of access that um that happens when um uh, being in a, a 
a, a, an environment that is more of a localized type conscious environment makes all of the difference in terms of um, being able to access a range of experience of frequency whereas heading into more of a suburban type mainstream environment where you've got a field of people who are generally either working in jobs they don't like or watching tv or facebook there's just a sense of stagnation and um so the access of to the light realms is completely compromised um i think that a lot of it is about proximity and being able to have a greater range of possibilities through that and then that touchy middle ground of timing too and resonance and you know She's, it's mentioned in KS also, like you blow up planets with too much frequency. Like there has to be a balance of it also. I think that's very relative in people's lives, you know, as they attune to the new energies too. And there has to be oh, a space sure. of grace, you know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. What has stood out the most as far as like having that grace element in it for you, frequency wise, of any of the KS stuff or anything in general that you've done? integrating the deep feminine aspects and bringing awareness to that and bringing healing to that um, not just on a personal level but also holding that as a general process and i think that has a lot to do with living in australia and the energies here i think that overall different groups and different beings have keys for each other when beings are together and doing the the healing work and the energy work on the land and creating that group consciousness field remembering to transcend the fourth dimensional level and that we we do live in a magical reality and there are different protocols and levels of experience within that and and that when we do come together physically we can sustain that experience of our power and being the love one of the highest things we can do i feel definitely there's a lot of power in that just coming together like-minded intention that's really what I'm trying to find in KS and the group. Like, where is the like-minded intention? It's just so divided. Like, we all have, there's good intentions, I feel it, but it's very scattered on how those intentions are carried out, you know? Like, how mm. are they going to be applied? And there's just no general focus with that. There's a lot of different theories in this group of people that follow the KS theme. But... The different groups on the planet that have also accessed higher frequency information of ascension and remembrance we all have keys for each other and I, I feel like we're all interdependent humans and that we can actually create a lot more clarity and a lot more progress and a lot more re-evolution through through sharing no matter what the group might be called each element of humanity has information for the other in different lands and so I feel like whether people are in KS or whether they're in Metatronic groups or whatever they're in, one of the hardest things witness about KS is that some of the most basic fundamental understandings about the black hole system and about the crystal spiral and in opposed to the Metatronic Fibonacci spiral is still knowledge that is not widely known and is knowledge that is very basic to us, but it could really help a lot of people to understand the parameters of this reality field. And um, in some ways, it's kind of tragic that even just the basics hasn't reached the collective indigo and crystal consciousness on the planet. So I feel like a lot of us could have really used that information. I don't know how long it took them to actually make those techniques available for free either. And looking back, I'm not sure how that worked out. I'm glad that they did because those were... That was, I mean, besides the torrents that were online, there was Cathara 2.3 that was online that some people had up for torrents. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I was playing that every single day, you know, just all day, every day. I was a stay-at-home dad at that time, so I had the time to do it. But it was just like nourishment for the soul. I was just absorbing it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I felt mm -hmm. that. So whenever... You know, I, I'm experiencing that now in newcomers in the same spirit that, yes, this is it. Like, I, I need more of this. Where is it? <laughs> you know? Mm. And she's, I, I, I do trust her. I know that she, she's been through hell, the legal stuff. They've both been through hell, through all this. And 
there's a respect value that has to be appreciated there with people that are in court, you know, either side. It's, it is, yeah. there's a lot going on there. And I know that she's trying to, she's dedicated to her line, which we all absolutely appreciate that she's bringing in this new information. It's, I think it's essential right now to help us better ground and understand what these frequencies are actually doing. That's been helping me with the, the KDDLs have gradually, but it's just like, it's a huge leap because I'm, I'm riding the boat with a lot of newcomers and people that are still on the other side, just kind of on the sidelines, hesitant and looking at this and I feel them and I want to stay neutral with that, you know, and in that understanding. And it's like you said, not just like ignore it away. And I just, I don't believe in that at all. That's not anything to do with our human spirit with what's gotten us mm. this far to persevere through all that we've been through. You know, we look out for each other. Mm. That's, that's instilled. In these Western countries, there are many Christian subcurrents that have created a base foundation of a lot of the ways that people relate to each other and to spirituality. And the tendency to give power away to a spiritual authority is part of the program running on a subconscious level. And the thing I think to remember is that, that a speaker is a speaker and not necessarily a spiritual leader because we all have our human levels to deal with and that there are all types of different beings with many missing links and keys but it's only when we look in the right place that the environment will always provide when there is a cohesive structure when things are fragmented and there's fractionation within the group all of a sudden the information streams that come through the whole group um, aren't accessible as much anymore. So um, that's what we're dealing with. Well, she's she's made the promise that she's going to make the freedom teachings free and available, like even all the sliders and everything. It's just a matter of, you know, her priorities and, you know, with her being the main, <clears throat> the main root and founder. <coughs> Excuse me. I have to, res I find myself respecting that, you know, that she is the core founder of this work and what she's brought down in density one and you know so I kind of have to move aside my ego and other thoughts that I see people in conversations that I've had with people and just find a, a respect for that that this is her priority and I, I I really do trust that I can't speak for her or this work or where it needs to go you know from from somebody that's brought it for us here that's done that there's an acknowledgement for me of that and I think that's kind mm. of, that is a dividing point for a lot of people, a lot of different factions surrounding KS, like the Lisa Renee group and Avalon and all these, these breakaway groups that have decided to take the KS material and kind of adopt it, make a few twists and turns, resell it, you know, and make businesses some, to some extent, some of them. Um, there's a loss of respect there, obviously, a, a huge loss of respect. And I've gone through that same consciousness field myself and kind of come out of it and uh, there's integrity in that you know in, in my own life realizing that and kind of adopting that moral and, and seeing that that you you do respect people's copyrights and what they've placed the value on of their own work you know and how far they they want their work distributed and um you know because i'm definitely not that not like that as a musician and with my art like i freely give it away and it's it, it's for sale on some sites and on other sites it's for free and the majority of it's for free and I don't really I'm just that's not in my nature to do that but that's that's a totally different type of uh, material you know totally different subject as far as what this stuff is so mm -hmm. it was like an honor code with that with the shield split I think that um, it's created a question of where to from here and how do we deal with this now and almost a sense of nowhere to go and that program is a result of not having the proximity and the access to the leader because the human requires access to the leadership at all times to be able to process it and heal and shaman. and deal with the shaman the shaman has to be present you know in the yeah village. yeah so with the Exactly. When that isn't available, people are left with nothing else to do but to form their own way of dealing with it. And yeah, the purity and the integrity of it. Yeah. Well, for me, it's been like, how do you how do you trust these other villages that start up with these other shamans that are trying to, you know, use this work in the name of and 
and apply their own touch to it and their own colors and there's different extents to that. I mean, there's some people that are sincere doing it and there's people not so sincere doing it and profiting and which is very blatant in your face that that's not right. That's absolute plagiarism in my eyes. That's my opinion. But, and I think it does catch up with you. If you're, that's kind of, I liken it in a lot of the posts that isn't that how we got ourselves in this position was not, not trailing the source, the original source of where we came from and not holding the integrity of that. And, you know, preserving that, <laughs> it's just very obvious to me. You don't mess with mm. that, you know. Mm. Yeah, at least put mm. a little tiny fine print of who this material is and link it to them and say, by the way, I got this from, from this here, you know, and just kind of, whenever it's on this level of material, because this is very intricate stuff, this is science, you know, you don't, you don't just make little adjustments to the science. Science is supposed to be very factual. <laughs> You know, it's mm. not not this little tiny curve that that's off in this other science of it, or I don't know. It's a whole different. It's a different category when it's science like this, and when it's this structured. The question I was going to ask you about hosting. What are your thoughts about hosting, host shields and stuff? Have you seen it? Like in others, you you mentioned in your group that you were in that there was like people going black hole fall stuff, and you stood as a group and helped them. That's a hosting thing. Though. My definition of hosting is um, holding a space of open field access to assist others in their own journeys of resolution and of healing and release. So many of the Metatronic perspectives with the group here is coming from the belief system that the only reason that we're born onto this planet is to experience love, to experience human love. Quite a relevant Thing to consider that the human experience of love can be messy it could also be the most powerful experience i think that a lot of what has gone on in terms of challenges with human levels of relationships has been part of a process to clear so much stuff for so many people and roots that ks has come from can only imagine how challenging it must have been in such a really different frequency time on the planet to to what we have now it makes sense that the challenges that they went through are you seeing it that much on the planet like right now groups that are like amnesty stuff and i mean if there well, really is I'm, like a sifting happening there's probably there's some that are waking up to the frequencies that don't want to go to black hole fall stuff or fermi fall that are going to need something but I guess it's been explained now that it's not really a hosting thing anymore like it's just through their own what they were birthed in from uh, like the one the I don't even know all the words to it but it's like the core of the core you know the Effies and the Christ star thing that everybody here basically carries that encryption and what they birthed in before they made all these choices of what families are going to be in or do this and that and that's the level of template that we're of the plasma template stuff that is being lifted right now through the fail safe and through the earth. So it's not really a hosting thing. It's they're getting themselves out through their own through their own material, through their own stuff that they, they carry inherently. That's like how holy the frequencies that coming in are, it's just like that's how close to God stuff it is. So that kind of rolls out hosting but you still kind of see it. I mean, obviously, people need help to wake up to the dynamics of what's happening around them and their bodies and Thank fallen for so long, some of them, and being accustomed to ways. Speaking of food, have you been noticing that? Like in diet, any changes of stuff that you can and cannot eat now? Like different philosophies? Yeah, I'm not able to eat any meat. Um, to eat the animal that's had its head yeah. cut off is just not part of the innocence program for me. You as much yourself, as I, so you're not going to eat meat by somebody else that's done that, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. well, it's, Hypocrite eating stuff. <laughs> that's what was interesting about Kimmy's interview because she's, she's noticing, she does do the homestead thing. She's got pigs and donkeys, chickens, everything. And she's noticing that she eats, eats less meat as she does the butchering herself, you know, and she does all the preparation and that you don't, you kind of don't want to eat as much after you do that. And there's more, there's definitely more respect, you know. And I had that growing up with the, even with chickens, like my dad had this old tree stump and the hatchet, the bloody tree stump, he cut the chicken's heads off and 
mom would boil the chicken, do feather and all this. And there, there was more of an appreciation. You saw the whole process. It wasn't just go down to the store and buy this piece of food stuff, you know. You really knew mm -hmm. the nitty gritty of what was going on there, what was happening, and how, how we, that's that primal stuff you were talking about earlier. And that's so much of that's mm. being deleted around us. And we still live with it, and we're just not acknowledging it because we just go to manufacture store bought stuff and not seeing the process, and we're still just chowing down McDonald's mm. stuff, you know. That's got to mm. affect our psyche some level. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. For anyone who hasn't done the uh, mucoid plaque cleanse, there's, there's so much held within the um, intestinal tract that's um, potentially been there for for so many years that is highly recommended to be cleansed out. And um, <laughs> that's what yeah, I'm that's scrubbing part out of right the... now. I'm doing the bentonite clay and psyllium husk thing right now, just scrubbing it out. It's been just oh, okay. years, you know. And kombucha, Have you done kombucha? Yes. Yeah, yes. Well, there's there's any. Yeah. I'm I'm fermenting it, making batches of it like every week. I drink it down, but drinking it all evening here. It's delicious. This guy, Dr. Anderson, that spent 20 years developing this um, particular cleanse, and there's a story of big vats of milk and eating onions for a whole weekend to try and chase parasites out of his body. Oh, God. It's brutal, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he, he developed this this cleanse called the Arise and Shine Cleanse, and that's one of the fast-track ways to cleanse the mucoid plaque yeah, from the body. and the mucoids, yeah. yeah. I actually, I learned all this from an interview that I did with Stefan Redding. He's, like, super into detox stuff, and he had lived it. You know, he was overweight and lost all this weight. He has this whole story of how he did it through this bentonite us thing. And I'm not, mm -hmm. I haven't been overweight or anything. I've been relatively healthy most of my life, but I've definitely been had my share of junk, junk food. So it's been I started earlier this year, and it's just been an ongoing process of the cravings thing because you got to reprogram the cravings, the sugars, and the the easiest part was actually dairy and like cow milk. That was just like super easy. I was ready to give that up already, yeah. and red meats too is easy. But they're still, mm -hmm. I've kind of replaced it with tuna now and hard boiled eggs, just kind of easing my way through there. But mm -hmm. it's like tackling the sugars, man, and the chocolate and the, all the candy stuff. <laughs> That's too much. And you see mm -hmm. it in, there's detox in all levels, like it's all connected because you see it in other areas you need to work on these, you know, unhealthy encryptions and things that we carry that just become entrained and just instilled in us and just these patterns of. Like, why am I doing this? This hurts my body. Why do I need to eat this and feel, feel crappy afterwards? Like, why why do I want to carry that energy? Take things in and, yeah. uh, that I know is poisonous. And I've seen that, like, in relationships, like, just taking in the poison, taking in the poison, and just keep making these decisions of, it's, yeah, it goes deep. <laughs> it's like a psyche mm. thing. Food is very interrelated, I think. Have you experienced that, like with food in the past, like just seeing how it's related? Oh, absolutely. I feel <laughs> like it's no mistake the particular foods that have been broadcasted. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, pounded in the our specific face. reasons. Oh yeah, like I'm what sure. behind why particular things have become mainstream regular foods, and yeah. I feel like there is State. complete strategy the reasoning behind why and um, <laughs> to step out of it and come back to a much more simple and a lot cleaner type of a diet is really beneficial for the psyche definitely yeah I've been asking my kids like who was the first human that went up to a cow and started pulling on on its thing and trying to get milk out of it just like what do you what were we thinking what is this why are we doing this stuff this is absurd and we're stealing eggs out of bird nests still and all this cow's milk and cheese products and, and those cravings to, from what I've perceived is they're all related to unmet mother nurturing mm. levels yeah, of reality and true. requiring those frequencies of mother frequency or the goddess frequency mm. yeah. and it's been that way for so long it's like yeah, that makes perfect sense mm. you know, mm. and the big steaks like eating the cow <laughs> oh god such a mess, man. Yeah, food is, is big. That's coming up to the surface for sure. 
I want you to hear Kimmy's interview. Did you hear much of it, or did you get to watch it? I'd like to see that. She's got sure. a fascinating theory on how this is going to pan out with the predator-prey system and animals, and that's kind of what she's experimenting with on her land with the animals. She's got all these animals living together. But, yeah, she's saying, like, there has to be a consciousness level of respect to the animals. The animals have to be happy, content, you know, because they don't know how many of them there are like to overpopulate and like how much to eat of the other one and so there has to be like we're the stewards of the earth so there has to be like some intervention level to that extent like with us too to take care of them and to learn what it's like to butcher your own pig before you just go buy some bacon you know and just crave it and all right i want to get back into like, how do you see KS in the future? Like, where do you see this going as far as the in the public arena? Do you think this is always going to stay cloistered how it is, or do you think eventually it's going to be just common common knowledge of these of the science accepted eternal sciences? Oh, it'll be great to see the group come together more fully and resolve and bring some of the important aspects of information out into the open more fully for the collective yeah you see that happening like it might there might be a level of trust developed again like the cathar team and stuff people getting certified it feels essential for the group to repair the structures otherwise there would not have been much purpose to have built them in the first place but for that to happen i think there needs to be a let go that takes place on many different levels but also to be able to get the key elements of the work out into the world feels really important as well. Well, that's still distributed through other people. That's why I was saying like the washdown, like these other people, some people are profiting off of it and it's going to get out there regardless. And there, there's going to be many yeah. different ways it's going to get out there because this is the world, especially nowadays, like the world that we live in, like it's, it's very much like now, 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 if you, if people need it, they're going to get it. That's it. Like mm -hmm. humanity needs it. They will get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there's Definitely. much of a sway of it, and that's why I was just having the, this conversation before our interview about that, about how it, th there is more of a demand for the real, you know, and for the truth, and and a realization that there is more out there, you know, even just in the the common masses. I feel that. I feel that ripple. I feel that question in the air, just around people that are, you know. It, you can even see it like with the Republicans dropping out support from Trump. <laughs> it's these little subtle things that are happening and people are just like pulling back in, in this energy like, oh, uh -huh. like these old discoveries, these magic discoveries. And the more people, the more of those sparks that are made, the more wider the routes get to that, the more open the minds get, you know, mm -hmm. to knowing that there could be even more than that than what they thought before. And it's just a snowball effect. So as that goes, I think the whole new age, and I've, I've experienced this firsthand with the new age movement with, with some groups that come in and Avalon's was a huge one. That was, that taught me a lot seeing that the groups that he brought in of people, like all his followers from that interview, it was just like people, some people could sense that there was something to this, you know, that there was more and they, they wanted to dig and they wanted it and they could feel the resonance of it. I think that's mm. happening in a huge way, like not just in new age stuff, but just that's just happening. That has to be acknowledged, you know, the availability. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that many can sense the importance of the information and have made a commitment to um, to share the elements of it. And um, yeah, it's a challenging situation, but I think people have done what they've had to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of sites taken down and copyright stuff and uh, I don't know it's this whole journey has really taught me a lot personally as far as where that that middle area is defined as as far as respect of somebody's work because I mean uh, at the same time I can't pretend that this is my work and I'm just gonna like hold this this group or the shield the people that i'm working with you know not the whole entire chaos group or whatever but just the people that come to me that i'm interacting with i can't hold this this energy about myself that this is, has anything to do with with me of of 
my work, you know, of what I've done. There has to be an acknowledgement of respect there that this is not my work. Like this is somebody else's work and she wants it protected and she does not want it out there on that level right now. So and I've gone through many different levels of awareness and awakenings of that, of just learning that new respect of that. And it's been, yeah, it's been a long road. I've lost Facebook accounts from it, you know, and just learn the ins and outs of it. Mm-hmm. And the integrity that that, that that stands for it's kind of it's reflective in my own life you know just learning learning that there's a teaching in that of seeing it that's true yeah but then the yeah, inner that's fair enough the inner frustration of just seeing all these people that want it and you know there is kind of there's there's an inner dilemma there obviously there's still there still is that because you feel for people and you want things to be different. You want it to change, but it, you have to develop a trust in it that it's it's going where it needs to go. Yeah, that's kind of where I've reached. But there has been there's been pushes, not even by myself. Recently, Alex Terrace had presented this to me to make an open letter to Arias about this, about the availability thing and the newcomers project that we started, and it was his idea, and I just put it on on public you know on facebook and there's people migrating towards it it's like under 100 people but the people that are there are very thankful that it's there and i'm seeing that like that doesn't matter where is the level of how many people that something is going to change someone's life to where you can say okay it's accredited (laughs) where is that level i mean if there's one person that it's helped or two people or three people i mean how many is it there's like under a hundred in this group that are very thankful that this group is here and it's a secret group. It's closed because there's, there's like shared, not material, but there's quotes from material. There's all a transcript of the true activation. And there's just like a core thing that's starting. I've made a lot of quotes from workshops that I felt that were good brevity of explaining things like the plasmas and the meiotics and stuff. And just, you know, whatever I can do on a, conscious level of not feeling like I'm going too far with it. You know, I'm definitely not putting up material anymore. So, but when you're like witnessing the supply and demand thing and it's right there in your face, it it can be overwhelming. It really can. And I've kind of given up on reaching out to them. That's why there's not much momentum in this letter. I'm not lending myself too much towards it because I've already reached out to them before. And mm. and a lot of, I've seen a lot of people that have, and there's no response. Even Kimmy, who is running the KRP list, like she's like the official handling the Crystal River prayer, prayer list during that time, the email group that was, you know, endorsed, and this is the KS group and everything. Like she never heard back from them. And she's already in the group. She's already doing the work, like, for them. So, well, there's responsibilities, there's privileges, and there's priorities. And maybe that's the thread of how this is also unfolding with the line of information that's that she's taking. Because obviously there's a deep, resound like commitment towards her line through all of this, through everything that she's endured. Like she has not, in my eyes, in my humble opinion, like she has not wavered from her line one second in all of this. Like she's sacrificed a ton and very obviously that she sacrificed her 3D life, you know, for her line of what she's doing, I, I feel that, you know, I feel the integrity in that. So I, I really feel that there's a continuity of, of these three things, of the responsibility of her taking this line, you know, of her commitment towards that. And there's also, you put that as, alongside the privileges, which this, it's kind of hard to swallow, but I'm just easing into this of seeing like, well, how, it shouldn't even be considered a privilege. Like everybody should have this. Is not that doesn't mix in with any of this. But I'm trying. To, I'm still putting it together. But I do see like some priority mixture in there as far as her responsibility. That this does take priority over the privilege of this, or the there's a different word for it, you know, or the availability of this right now as far as the freedom teachings. That there is kind of a priority of this new information coming through. But. Mm. Yeah, it's just some, I'm just tossing it around, kind of seeing it. Yeah, there's there's only so much one person can do, and and if there's a whole bunch of, or hundreds of people, or thousands of people waiting on something, 
then obviously the more support that is there, then the quicker the group can have their needs met and a good crew that is cohesive and on the same page. And yeah, it's easier said than done, but really I guess it's the only way forward. Yeah. I mean, obviously I, I, I trust that she knew what the priorities were before, you know, and maybe the, even possibly the timings of these grid wars and things, which I'm still wrapping my head around as far as like, what that whole grid wars and evac stuff was about, I still have not pieced all that together, the timing of that. I mean, there was a lot of crazy things that were going on in current, in uh, world affairs and everything during those times, but the intensity of it on the cosmic level is a lot to swallow. And even Kimmy had mentioned that, and she's an old timer that had been in the group and gone to the old works, older workshops. She said that she didn't, she didn't feel the resonance of that either, of the evac stuff. She never felt that there was going to be a three day, shield pull evac or it just didn't make sense and coming from her that that really pronounced a lot for me of what i was feeling already of this doesn't make sense <laughs> like something and there's always been like two threads of, of of ks going for me too there's the dramas the politics the you know all these different fa families this and that guardian family this and that it was grid wars and then there's the fundamental core mechanics of your anatomy and, and you know who you are as a eternal living being you know the, and all these things that kind of surround those dynamics of the stories of fall and ascension and different systems and but there's it's just very apparent that there's been those two threats so i mean you, it kind of does make sense in the ks group how you'd see people focusing on certain aspects of chaos because it's just so vast like there's different parts of it you can just get stuck on to stay on you can get raveled up around the politics and all the family histories and or you can just stay on the on the healing you know just want to self-heal it's all there like everything is there yeah it's really possible for any leader to be or spiritual teacher to be wrong about anything or inaccurate or have distorted information so that's where the group consciousness comes in says something is sort of bouncing off the wall here so we're going to deal with this right now we're going to get to the bottom of it and i think in many ways we're doing the best we can with what we have to deal with it yeah i think so <clears throat> another thing that uh, mark gibbs implied in his interview too which i think is is very spot on is that the Guardians are giving us a lot of, there's a lot of information that has been given, but there's also a lot of information that has not been given, like on purpose. There's a lot of things that just are not, it's not time for, it's not at that level of, of a uh, priority, <laughs> you know, to be given, which says a lot mm -hmm. too. Like they're definitely, and I feel the truth in those words and what he said and the way he said it. And I do feel that there is priority in some of the information that's, that's given like I'm, you see that in world affairs right now like with the government's WikiLeaks and the timing of these things like right before the debate here's this huge leak about Trump in the in the tour bus and stuff about women and all this I mean there's definitely a priority of timing in energies and stuff around us in our environment I'm not saying that that's like I mean that's obviously irrelevant type of attempt you know propaganda stuff or what they're doing but I think it works I, it works in other areas too, like when things are disclosed <clears throat> and for what reasons, you know, for the balance of things. I think that that's probably, that's got to hold some relevance. Because there is a frequency in that. As soon as like something's released, there's like a wave and it's just like, a, it's like an activation happens and it's like, ah, oh, like it happened. It could be negative or positive. There's just like a ripple that happens and everybody's activated to that truth and the, that awareness and we all carry it and we're just sharing it and sharing that new air together with it so that could be like some of this stuff with this like she wasn't talking about nasa and and what they were how they were studying the tetrahedron and the sun's merkaba and earth and everything like she had just disclosed that like in the kddls <clears throat> so that's interesting that's kind of a bridging thing Solar symbiosis. Uh, you haven't studied the the KDDLs yet, or heard that, have you? No. She had not. just mentioned that that they're doing basically, you know, those old charts of solar symbiosis that she had done like way back in early sliders, I think, showing the 
the plasma arcs of between the sun and the earth in like a natural solar system what it looks like and it has these arcs going from the planet to the Merkaba of the sun and to the Merkaba of the planet and there's just like a cohesive exchange of energy that's happening between the planet and the sun in normal solar systems they're not like upside mm-hmm. down tilted sideways and all this so NASA is actually studying the earth's connection like that like these arcs that they're seeing now and they're getting photography that's able to to film it kind of like the you're seeing all these solar flare things <laughs> kind of like that like they're starting to get actual pictures and detecting it you know it's showing up on the new re- technologies radar so that's fascinating and that's confirming chaos basically the solar symbiosis charts that she's done mm. yeah that's I mean if there's more threads like that that start popping up to me that's like that's a given that this is going to replace a lot of science this is going to just step right in and it's going to be there and they're going to say this lady was doing this back in the 90s and <laughs> it's crazy mm. crazy to mm. see that they can already yeah, say that they, they could already say that they could look at her charts and track it down and, and see unless she had an informant in NASA that was privy to this or what that there was already this study that was happening. But then you have to link that in with all of the dynamics. If you link it in with that, then it's all correlated, you know. Andromeda, too, like the collision with the Milky Way to Andromeda, she's saying that they're they're right about that. She's, she's attuned that the, her information is confirming that, except it's a different amount of time. It's not like millions of years. I'm shifting. Attention beyond the simulation. I'm setting my intention at the highest vibration. This is the ascension, the ascension to the fifth dimension. This is. The ascension, the ascension to the fifth dimension. Do this. 